What do we do during a market decline? This week on the Extreme Personal Finance Show. All right, welcome. Welcome to episode 23 of the Extreme Personal Finance Show. My name is Chris. Thank you for joining us this week. Joining me, my co-host this week is Dan. Dan, how are you doing today, man? Doing great. Finally cooled off a little bit today. Oh, I don't know if it, it was, I, we had to deal with the rain downpour yesterday, but this morning, whew, it was, it was beautiful. I actually, had, I opened the weather app and I was like, okay, it was like 72 clear sky. And I was like, where can I move that it's this weather all the time? Right. <laughs> it was perfect. Yeah. Yes. I feel like by the time we find that place, everybody else have found it before we did. And it's like, <laughs> oh, now it's busy. That's right. That's right. So, um, so ha have you, have you recovered from yesterday, Dan? Um, fortunately I'll let you in on my secret. I recovered from yesterday because I got to the point where it didn't bother me to begin with. Fortunately. That's, that's right. So, <laughs> um, what is it? Sun Tzu's at the best wars, the war not fought. So it's like, there you go. It's like, oh, well, market's down. Not too bad. That, so yeah, that's right. be some good discussion for today though. Right. Yeah. Let's go ahead and talk about you know, what we should do when there's a market decline. And, and again, you know, you couldn't really go anywhere yesterday. I mean, it was all over the news, all over local news, national news everywhere. And again, something that we seem to be a, a, a common theme here is talking about the doom and gloom of the headlines. And it was talking about the U S economy, you know, is, is headed for a recession, a crazy downward spy, spiral, right? The sky is falling. Right. What are we going to do? It's terrible because it's never happened before. <laughs> So it's just brand new, brand That's new activity. Right. And I think what always gets everyone is that it's it it does tend to be something new, like the impetus of what's causing it is something new, or at least something's not happened in a while, mm -hmm. right? So there was, uh, I didn't dive deep into it because it's not really something that affects my world or the or the people that that I work with or, or my family and my friends and whatnot. So, but my understanding is something in the Japanese market uh, over the weekend was very negative, which had uh, just a lot of people that are in the industry and more on the trading side and the larger firms or whatnot that deal with not people like you and me, right? We're right. just waiting for the markets to open on Monday, thinking, oh my gosh, I got to take action based off of what happened yesterday. And so from right from the get-go was just overwhelm of, of activity, which then that little blip then gets in the news and then it just spreads, especially when, you know, I'm sure some people just have all kinds of different TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, some kind of notifications going off in their pocket and look at it and it's something that they wouldn't have cared about in a million years, but that cleverly crafted headline gets put out there and they do something they wouldn't normally do. Right. So that's right. That's right. And I think that's one of the, the biggest things. And this goes to one of the articles that I had posted about, you know, how to invest during a decline. And, and my story was basically talking a little bit of how I, you know, this goes back a couple of years ago where I had posted um, an article just saying that I, I was out to dinner with somebody and they were really concerned about where to move their money because the market was down. And I said, well, actually, I wouldn't do anything with it. I would leave it right where it is. And it's that because, because we're looking at the long term, and because you have such a you know um long-term horizon left to invest, it's best just to leave those assets where they are and let it recover. Right. Yeah. Because if there's plenty of studies out that show, you know what happens if you miss the the best days in the market and now the overall performance will end up dropping. And then the counter argument to that is like, well, yeah, but what if you miss the worst days? Like, well, unfortunately the worst days and the best days tend to happen really close to each other. Sure. So if you see the markets going down or you want to react or whatnot first, unless it ends up being a prolonged drawdown, which does happen, Mm -hmm. But a lot of times they happen quickly in a, in a day or two, right? So by the time you log in, see that it's down and make a transaction, you've already missed it. It's already down. Mm -hmm. So it's too late. But that aside, um, you log in, you take it out and it's down. 
within a few days, maybe a week or so is when those great days are going to come. And unfortunately, just because of how we are and talk about the doom and gloom, right? There's not those, those rosy headlines that then get put on the news and be like, oh, I need to go get invested back. It's like, you'll hear them kind of after the fact, like, oh, by the way, the last two days, it's up like 8%. You're like, oh, right. I should have invested. <laughs> right. So because that's not how it happens, we we get out of the market, we get uninvested, and then we miss those good days that come a short time later because now we're not actively thinking about it. Or now mm -hmm. we may even be still scared. Well, okay, it's come back up a little bit today, but tomorrow it's going to go back down again, right? Because that's what it did two days ago. And we start second guessing ourselves. And then you you didn't miss the bad day because it was too late. It was already dropped when you got in there. And then you missed the good days on the other side because you're not convinced that the good days are going to be back so soon. And you just end up kind of baking in that loss and, and right. you can't get away from it. So. I think one of the biggest things, and this was actually something I got from, I think where it first clicked with me was one of, um, it was Tony Robbins, one of his first uh, finance books. Do you remember what that was? Was that Unbreakable or was that a different one? I can't remember. Oh. Anyway, I'll look it up and I'll, yeah. So, but I, that's when it first clicked to me where it was kind of talking about like you haven't lost money just because the value of your portfolio is down. You only lose money if you sell it. Right. And that was where it truly kind of clicked with me. And I was like, oh yeah, because eventually it will come back. So to, I'm I'm curious to hear like what are your thoughts when you have, you know, people are worried, they're scared, and they see the headlines, and you know they think they need to do something, right? They feel like they got to like move this to cash, right? They got to do this, they got to do something. How do right. you how do you keep them, you know, um, <laughs> their mind at ease? Basically, just kind of reassuring, keep it where it's at, let it recover. Sure. Well, I think the answer to that depends a little bit on where where we're at, where they're at. Um, have I been working with them for a while? Have they been invested in the way that they're invested? And it, are they confident that their allocation is correct and and, and whatnot? The, the discussion is going to go a little bit different way, right? So um, if they will probably end up in the same place, but the talking points to get there may be a little, a little bit different. Um, but if we've had discussions about, um, you know, the ability to take on risk and the desire to take on risk, and have had those discussions about, okay, well, if you're invested in this manner, here's the ebb and flow, here are the swings that you can be looking at, you know, how would you be comfortable with that? Is this something that you understand this is a long-term investment? And, you know, if the answers to those are all consistently yes, 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 then it's important to just talk it through and be like, well, remember back however long ago, last week, last year, when the market was good and we had this discussion, you know, and what we had determined together was that this was an allocation that you wanted to be in because of its long-term ability to grow and that this was going to happen at some point. It's not, because it's not, it, it should not be a surprise. It's like, this is going to happen at some point. Um, and there's like, yeah, I do remember that. It's like, okay, well, then what that could tell us is that maybe your investment should not be 100% in the equities market. But that's a change we can make later. Mm -hmm. It's not a change that we make now because now is to your points, like it has to recover. So you give them that thing to look forward to. It's just like, okay, yeah, maybe this wasn't the right investment uh, philosophy for you. Now that we have been through, really, it's one thing to talk about it. It's another thing to go through it, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, now that we've been through it, maybe we need to have a little bit less volatile of a portfolio in the future, but let's keep going the way it is until that does have the recovery. And then we can rebalance into a different kind of portfolio. But doing it up front when you're in the losses is not the time to do it. Does that does it make sense? It does. So it does. Having yeah. that, giving them something more to to look forward to and and get the mind out of the present, yeah. right? And be like, oh yes, I am going to do this change at a certain date and time in the future when these markets have recovered, and then we can make those changes. And I think it 
not to discount um, the feeling. I mean, there is a little, I mean, I know we're trying to take the emotion out of this, right? But there can be a feeling of loss, right? I mean, when all of a sudden you Absolutely. see that and and I reluctantly logged into my <laughs> dashboard and saw, you know, I'm down, uh, you know, oh, basically over a hundred thousand dollars in a day. Yeah, it can hurt. Yeah, it stings. Well, it's gonna sting more and more the larger your accounts go, right? That's right. You know, if you have a hundred dollars and you're down for 10%, it's like, oh, I've got 90 bucks, you know, it's no big deal. But portfolio just grow in size and it's gonna it's gonna sting a lot more. So I know one of the things that that kind of helped me start to think about it differently was I don't know this word for everybody. Um, I like to look at share counts instead okay. of dollar amounts because when the market uh, goes down, my share counts stay exactly the same. Yeah, I haven't lost okay. anything. I have exactly what I owned yesterday. Okay. Okay. And I, then you just don't look because the dollar value amount isn't relevant to for me today. Got it's it. owning the owning the assets is what's relevant to me today. So it's like say you live in a home, right? And you pay your mortgage or Maybe you don't, maybe you're mortgage free at this point, but you pay your mortgage and you're doing your mm -hmm. thing and it's a use asset. You know, you, you, you go to sleep in it, you cook your dinner in it, you just do what it is. And I come into you today and it's like, Hey, your house is worth $500,000. Oh, okay, cool. And then tomorrow I knock on your door. Hey, your house is worth $450,000. It's like, okay, I'm still sleeping in my bed. I'm still... <laughs> making my breakfast i'm still doing the things i do with my house because the value of it today is not what's important so i try to do the same thing and just looking at share counts and it's like you own the same things that you own yesterday today right. someone's just saying it's priced a little bit different and tomorrow they'll come back and tell you it's priced a little bit different again so got it now i'll say this though um it, well I had it lost my train of thought. Basically, right. it had had something to do along the lines of if if it is bothering you, then it's just it's not the right account holdings for you. Similar to what I was talking about earlier, yep. you know. And you just uh, you just move on from there and find an allocation that does work better for you. Sure. I thought uh, I thought you were going to go down the path too of you know one thing that you know we all like to um, we always like to get a discount. We always like to get a, a good deal, right? Sure. Yeah. And so when you're saying I look at the share count, well, ideally the market goes down. Well, now you can buy more shares <laughs> with with that, you know what I mean, with the money. So yeah, you, you well, know, maybe, you know, it depends on how long it's down and when you have money. Yep. You know, um I going back to kind of our, our budgeting discussions before, it's like mm -hmm. I generally speaking don't think about having extra money mm -hmm. it, it has a purpose for where it is you know if it's supposed to be invested it's invested if it's not invested it's because it's for something else sure. so if the market is down well i don't make my next investments until a month from now because of the the way our accounts are automated it goes in it just at the end of the month it's like the company says okay boom here this is your money into your 401k your tsp or whatever so whatever the market was today is like, well, we'll see where it is when it's actually time to buy them. Sure. You know, it could be back up again. So I think for um, those, for those that do dollar cost averaging, and yeah. you know, if, if you're continually do it and if the market is down that month, well, that's okay. Now you just bought those investments at a, you know, on sure. sale, if you will. Yeah. And like when it goes down for a bit and it just doesn't hit those all time highs for a little while, then yeah, it, you're absolutely right. It does give you opportunities to buy them at lower costs. Um, Cause I heard someone today it was uh, Bo Hansen from the money guy show who was mm -hmm. actually, I think he said he was quoting Nick Murray was uh, I could be getting it wrong. Um, hopefully I'm attributing this correctly, but it's like, if you think the market is high today, wait till you see it 10 years from now. <laughs> right. right so it's just whether it's it's in a down market or still kind of going up the whole idea is that it's going to keep going up and up and up because of what the market is right it's business owners and shareholders who's and boards and ceos and cfos whose whole job is to make the company make money mm -hmm. that's that's what they're hired to do is make sure that their organization right makes money and things will change 
you know, we are in a, an election year, different people will get voted in office and all kinds of things are going to happen in this world. But at the end of the day, the people who run those organizations, their job doesn't change. It's to figure out in whatever environment that they're in at the time, how does the organization make money? And that just carries on. Right. Do you feel, do you feel switching gears a little bit? Do you feel as though that helped contribute to the news, right? And like kind of the, the, the clickbait headlines and stuff was also the fact that shortly after, you know, Wall Street's opening bell yesterday, basically every, almost every, I mean, Charles Schwab, Fidelity, Vanguard, all of them reported basically outages or, right. you know, they were down, you know, I think it was almost like 15,000 Charles Schwab users. There was 15 minutes where they couldn't, they couldn't even log into their account. Wow. So I'm just curious on your thoughts there. Do you think that just kind of exacerbated like the entire thing? I mean, maybe it wouldn't have captured so many in the news if that wasn't an issue. I don't know. Oh, I'm sure. Because I mean, it's just more ways to add doom and gloom, right? It's like, hey, yep. the, not only is the market down, there's <laughs> nothing you can do about it, right? <laughs> so um, so absolutely, you know, putting that out there and having them and, and not just that they adding to the doom and gloom and the people going in to maybe withdraw their accounts or whatnot, but also the fact that um, there's going to be people who's like, oh, I have a Schwab account. I wonder if I wonder if I can log in. Mm -hmm. So now now they're going to try to log into their account. So multiply that times however many people who wouldn't have even thought of logging into their accounts. Now that they hear it's nobody can, their curiosity is going to get the better of them. They're like, oh, I wonder, I wonder if I'm able to log in. And then we're just going to tax servers even more. And it just, just no bueno. So, but I mean, you got to kind of expect it, right? You know, to a certain extent, because if you figure it's easier than ever for people to be able to participate in, in the market. Right. And not just in, you know, with IR, more access to IRAs or more people getting 401ks or even people being auto enrolled in their 401k that normally maybe they wouldn't have, but now their companies are just enrolling them and it's more of an opt out as opposed to opt in. Um, but with technology where you can get on your phones and you can get on your iPad or you can log in from anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. you don't even need like a hard line internet connection, right? So there's more people than ever that are participating in the markets, which means by definition, you're going to have more people who can participate in the mania when it happens. So, you know, is it good that people have access to the market? Absolutely. But the double-edged sword to that is that then when there are turbulent times, there's going to be that many more people who are unfortunately potentially making very bad mistakes with their accounts as well. They're making, so. uh, yeah, bad decisions. Again, you know, if if you if you're looking at this long term, just leave it alone. <laughs> I know. I think that's the thing. Is I think that like what we said a little bit earlier was many people feel as though they should be doing something. Right. It's just right. this gut reaction kind of a thing. Right. I don't know if it's following the herd. I don't know if it's, well, um, I, I, I want to take my money out and put it into cash so it doesn't drop anymore. Or I, I don't know what that is, but it's just that feeling, that gut feeling like, well, I got to do something, you know? Right. Well, and I think that's the importance of building up your financial literacy and building mm -hmm. up your resiliency, both financially and individually as a, as a, as a whole person, um, because that way you're able to look at it and realize that you 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 actually are still doing something, even if you're doing nothing. That's because, right. That's absolutely your, right, Dan. Yes. Your plan could be that in this moment, what I'm supposed to do is nothing. I am not That's supposed right. to react. So you you learn from from those the ability to have that higher self-awareness and self-regulation um which parts of parts of resiliency right self-awareness self-regulation and those are act being able to think about you know activating events okay the market's down you know and then the thoughts that you have oh no i'm going to lose money 
but it's this uh, it's that called ATC model, activating thoughts or um, event, then the thoughts, and then the consequences, right? Um, and then so everything's going to have a consequence. And being able to think through and have the self-awareness of, okay, I'm going to have these emotions in this market, and I need to make sure that I'm doing the proper response so that I do so that I like the consequences, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to bake in and be stuck with my losses. I need to hold on and wait for the market to recover, you know, but you, you build that ability by thinking through um, your, your thoughts and the consequences that you'll have them and being able to have that resilience when markets are in decline and know it's like, all right, well, my thing to do is to not do anything. I like so, that. I think even though you're not doing anything, you are doing something. And if your yeah, if your eye is on the prize twenty years in the future, that's what you should be doing. <laughs> you know, exactly. That's awesome. And so, yeah, I was to say, any last minute kind of words of wisdom, thoughts, you know, for those people again that when you see market volatility, and again, we're going to see it again. It's going to happen to help reassure people that that they're they're doing you know if they don't do anything they're still doing something mm -hmm. well another thing you do is in these times remember that and think about what's the incentive of the person feeding you the information right uh, a lot of times with certain networks and whatnot the their incentive is to keep you tuned in and they do that by providing some kind of fear because that's what captures eyes more than the positive unfortunately yep. that's how it goes so think about what is what is the incentive on who's providing you this information right and then when you can kind of narrow that down and be like this is not beneficial for me a lot of times the best thing you can do is i'm going to say it this way is, is go for a walk you know yeah. and what i really mean by that is like turn off the tv <laughs> put down the phone you know unplug and just go for a walk, just go get some fresh air and let that craziness do what it's going to do. And that's not you. That's not what you should be doing. If you feel like it is, if you're not currently, um, you know, if you don't currently have a good financial plan that you're happy with and that you've thought through and that you've had vetted, whether it's with a professional or a friend group or one of the various places online where people have you know, gotten together and pursuing financial independence in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm. uh, if you've not developed that, that's your, that's your clue to say, okay, I need to do this. So that way in these times of market turmoil, I have my plan. So. I love it. I love it. Cool. Thanks, Dan. And I want to thank everyone for listening again when there's market volatility, you'll get through it. It's okay. <laughs> you'll get through yeah. it. Um, I just like to say, ignore the noise because that's what that's a lot right. of it is. Yes. So. Ignore the noise. Absolutely. There's so much noise out there. Um, remember, please um, like subscribe. Um, what did the kids say? Smash that like button. I don't think they say that anymore. Hit, ring the bell. I'm ring the bell. Sure. Yeah, that's right. Share Click. with your friends, you know, that's the biggest one. You know what? We'd absolutely love it. If you share this podcast, share YouTube, share it with your friends. If you feel as though that someone would find value about uh, us to schmucks talking. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, we really do appreciate sharing it. And we will see you next time on the Extreme Personal Finance Show. See ya!